I literally lost my job overnight. We lost thousands and thousands of dollars from state advertisers. It was probably about 10 months where I was not paid at all. I'm Alan Leverett, and I published the Arkansas Times Magazine in Little Rock. Now, what does that have to do with anything that's important to the people of Arkansas? We are not boycotting Israel. We're not boycotting anyone. We're just refusing to be dictated to in terms of taking a certain political position in return for money. You know, we employ 30 people today. Those are families, and it hurts us. This is about American values. This is about the First Amendment and freedom of speech. And that's what this boils down to, regardless of what position you take on the boycott. We're standing up for the First Amendment and the United States Bill of Rights. This is a bigger problem than just Arkansas. Many states have passed legislation penalizing boycotts, mostly focusing on Israel because of its violations of Palestinian human rights. These violations have been confirmed by the UN, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and the Israeli human rights group, B'Tselem. The boycott is a time-honored tactic for effecting social change. This method of protest has been an important part of our country's democracy. In December 1955, for over a year, nearly the entire African-American population of Montgomery, Alabama refused to ride on city buses in protest of segregation on public transportation. The boycott success was crucial to the success of the civil rights movement. In the 1960s, Worldwide protests began against the apartheid regime in South Africa. In the U.S., anti-apartheid organizing grew in the 1980s with cultural and sports boycotts and economic divestment, contributing to the fall of the apartheid regime. With these anti-boycott laws, some of our politicians are trying to take away our individual liberties. I messaged my supervisor and I said, this is against my constitutional right. And she said that, unfortunately, I cannot come back to work if I don't sign that part of the document. I literally lost my job overnight. These kids lost their point service that otherwise would not be provided for them. So it was like an attack on me personally because I am Palestinian, also an attack as an American citizen because it was a violation of my First Amendment. This is a tactic for them to try to silence and scare people and bully them. And it's about time people learn the truth. The job of our legislators is to protect our rights. These anti-boycott laws are taking them away. I found in my contracts, I had to sign a certification that I would not boycott the state of Israel. When our elected officials refuse to act on major human rights abuses, one of the tools we've always had in the United States is our right to boycott. These laws originated by ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, as a template law. They first took on boycotters of Israel. And now what we're seeing is the same template is being used, changing just one or two words, fossil fuels or firearms. If the right to boycott is no longer protected, then what is the limit? The same politicians who give Israel $4 billion a year won't criticize Israel's attacks on Palestinian human rights. The anti-boycott bills use the power of the state to silence us. We have to stop them. Whatever your position on Israel, firearms, or fossil fuels, the right to boycott is an essential element of free speech and the First Amendment. Work with your community to protect this fundamental right to boycott.